Would you like to learn how to transform your melodies from sounding like this to this? this well stick around I'll show you the process I use and we'll work through an example start to finish I'll also show you a few other examples that I cooked up Today we're going to be transforming a simple melodic skeleton, the one that we came up in our last video. I'll put a link in the description if you haven't seen it. And we're going to be transforming it into various different characters. Now, this, this is useful in both concert music and also in film music. Um, you know, in concert works, you frequently want to take a theme and then transform it in various different ways. Uh, and in film music, of course, the same thing, right? You might have a light motif for a character or a scene or a, or a location or something like that. Uh, and in one case, it's foreboding and in another case, it's happy and so forth. So um, that's what we're going to be doing today. One of the canonical examples of doing this in concert music is Liszt's B minor piano sonata. Um, Nari Soul, by the way, just made a wonderful video about some of the transformations uh, of themes that happened in that piece. Uh, today, we're actually not going to be talking so much about transformations of a single theme, but rather the fleshing out of a melody in different characters um, by varying a certain melodic skeleton a little bit. So first, I'll show you the process that I use. Next, we're going to go through an example. Uh, start to finish together. And then finally, we'll go through a number of other examples, transforming the same theme into different characters, where I follow that same process, but I'm just not going to make you sit through me <laughs> uh, working it all out in my new notation software. By the way, I use Finale and Note Performer, but for this uh, sort of thing, you can use whatever notation software um, uh, you want to use, whether it's Dorico, Sibelius, MuseScore, as long as it has decent playback, like Muse sounds in MuseScore. I will also say that you could do this in a DAW if you wanted. Um, I tend to find, for me, it works better in notation, but use whatever works best for you. So the process we're going to use is as follows. For each emotion, we're going to figure out what should the, you know, the characteristics of the theme and the accompaniment be in order to elicit the desired feeling. Um, once you've got the sort of character of the theme uh, sorted out, then we want to figure out what instruments we should use for the melody or counter melody if, if there are going to be counter melodies. Um, what instruments should be present in the accompaniment and you know, do we need any counter melodies, right? How are, how are we gonna derive those? How are you gonna create space for the counter melodies in the main melody so that you don't just have two competing ideas going at each other at once? And then see if there are any opportunities to highlight some special moments in your track. You know, maybe special chord changes or uh, places where the melody comes in or there's some other part of the track that you want to highlight. Now, you might be saying, that's great, but I have no idea how to answer those questions for, let's say we want to create a piece of music that's sad. Like, how would I know what instruments to use? How would I know what the characteristics of the theme should be, right? So um, there's lots of ways to do that. The primary one is just listen to music, listen to existing music. How does it make you feel? When you have listened to a lot of music that has a certain character, you'll get a better idea of, oh, well, this uh, music f makes me feel sad because it uses this instrument, or this music makes me feel happy because it has this character, dotted rhythms, or you know, whatever. Um, 
Another thing you can do is watch films. Take note of the music and scenes of a certain character, right? When, when there's a sad scene, what kind of music is playing? Lots of strings or oboes or something, right? Or sometimes the lack of music. Um, and sometimes you'll notice that the music uh, in those scenes isn't what you expect, but it works anyway. So see if you can figure out why that is. Um, there are a few movies uh, that have some very complex emotions expressed through music. One of my very favorites is at the end of Harry Potter 3. There's a scene with uh, where the Dementors are swirling around Harry and uh, Sirius Black. And John Williams does an amazing job of capturing the sort of um, the tension with the uh, sweetness of the reunion with it's just it's an amazing mixture of emotions and he just does it absolutely masterfully now i will say there's not any right or wrong way to orchestrate any emotion but there are common ways to do so there are some kind of cliches but you know cliches exist for a reason <laughs> they work right uh and so uh feel free to use a cliche um, but if you want to get out of cliches, of course, there are other, um, way, there are a multitude of, of ways to or orchestrate any emotion. So I'm going to start by showing you the melodic skeleton that we came up with last time, and then we're going to, uh, flesh this out into a real melody with real instrumentation for, for full orchestra. Again, following the process that I outlined earlier. Here is the melody we came up with last time. Now, first, I'm going to fix something that's been bugging me. This D. I really don't like how it causes a cluster at the bottom of the chord. So I'm going to put it up here. The only trouble is that does not lead very well from this B. So I'm also going to introduce an E here. better. Now, let's start with a fresh document. And I'm going to use an orchestral template that I set up a while back. I don't know what instruments exactly I'm going to need yet, so I'm going to go ahead and just use the entire orchestra. Okay, now we need to figure out what our time signature is going to be. So this is going to be a sad version. Um, I think I'm going to use 3-4. Um, and we're in E minor. Now, I don't really know what the tempo is going to be yet because we haven't made our theme yet. So um, I'm going to leave this at 120 and then we'll figure it out uh, once we get in there. Okay, so here's our orchestral template. So now we need to start making some decisions. Okay, so we want a sad character. Um, so sad music um, has a lot of suspensions and retardations. So I think we can do that. Um, we can use some of those to create that, that sad feeling. Um, what instrument do we want the melody in? Well, some sad instruments are 
uh, or some instruments that typically you know connote sadness are like cellos, um, strings. Uh, in general, but especially cellos, uh, oboes, English horn, um, a clarinet can be sad if it's sort of, you know, uh, plaintive. Honestly, almost any uh, instrument can be made sad. Uh, bassoons also sometimes can be comical, but also sometimes can be sad. So... I think I'm going to use an English horn for the melody. Um, and then I think I want a counter melody too, and that I'll give to a solo cello. So because we are going to have counter melodies, that means that we need to leave gaps in the melody or spaces where there's not a lot happening so that the uh, counter melody can shine through. So, now, I use an app on my phone called Tap Tempo in order to determine the tempo I want. So I'm going to just write down a, uh, a theme as it occurs to me, um, which is based on our melodic skeleton over here. Bum, bum, bum. So first I'm going to figure out the tempo that I want. I think I'm going to have something like bum ba dum ba dum ba da da. Um, so one, two, three. That's about quarter note is 50. So let's uh, add a tempo marking here that is uh, a quarter note is uh, 50. Okay, sign that. And now I'm just going to start typing in the melody here. Now remember, an English horn is a transposing instrument, so it sounds a fifth lower. So I have a B uh, here, but it's going to sound as an E, a fifth lower. Okay, so hopefully you can see how I derived this from this melodic skeleton. Bum, bum, bum. I'm just repeating each note. And then, so what I could do is just do this, but that's a little bit plain. And also it doesn't give any room with the constant eighth notes for there to be a counter melody. So I'm going to cram the entire melody into the first beat. Okay, now in sad music, one thing that uh, uh, makes music often sound sad is descending leaps. And I'll, I'll demonstrate what I mean. So, um, what I could do is just, I could do this. So let me put some slurs in. And so what this sounds like right now is like this. But I think what I'm gonna do instead is put in a descending leap. Like this. See, doesn't that sound sadder? You can see if I contrast it with, with, say, going up, it doesn't sound as sad. Okay. 
And as you saw, if I just stay on the same note, it doesn't sound as sad. So again, I'm going to use a descending leap here. And the reason I picked a C, written G, is that that's just a chord tone, right? It's a chord tone that's a nice distance away to make that sad sounding sort of descending leap. Now, I said we were going to put a counter melody in here. So this chord is E minor. This chord is a C minor 9 chord. So, um, you know, with a, a major ninth. So how can we, what sort of counter melody can we do, uh, can we write? Um, I think... Okay, so I said I wanted the counter melody to be in the cellos. So let's let's do that. Um, so let's write down here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the inverse of the melody as the counter melody. Now remember, this is a G major chord, so I'm landing on a G. Oh, whoops, that's not the, that's the inverse. <laughs> and I'm going up where I'm, so basically in this melody, everywhere I go down in the original, in the original melody, I'm going up and vice versa. So together they sound like this. Okay, I'm going to put in some slurs here. And remember I said I wanted this to be a solo cello, so I'm going to mark it solo. Um, unfortunately, uh, oh, and actually I'm going to mark the English horn solo as well, not because I only want one player to play, which of course there's only going to be one player because it's the English horn, but because I want that to come out even though there's going to be some accompaniment texture, right? I want the English horn player and the conductor to know this is the solo right here. I want this to be heard. In the cello part, solo means um, you only want one player to play. Now, unfortunately, um, Finale does not uh, right now uh, automatically apply a different sound. Uh, based on uh, based on uh, a marking. So what I can do though is I can say change instruments and I can just say cello here for these four bars and nothing about it changes visually but when it plays back it's going to use just a solo cello sound. Okay so let's hear what this sounds like together. Okay, now again, I'm just going to use the same sort of uh, transformation of this original theme. Now here I could, remember our original theme goes like this. Um, And I could do that, but that's a bit plain. And also there's a there's an opportunity for another descending leap here. So it's really to hammer home that sad feeling. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is so this B A written F sharp E. Um, uh, is is from the original theme, and this uh, written G uh, concert C is just a chord tone. Okay, and then this remember is a uh, G augmented eleven chord, so that means that <laughs> lots of notes are chord tones. 
So what I'm going to do is, and you may, I, I got a comment last time about how I was entering these notes. Um, I'm just using the keyboard uh, entry in Finale to do this. I'm not using a keyboard, uh, an external MIDI controller, but again, you're absolutely welcome to do that if that works for you. Let's put in the slurs. Okay, and let's hear what this sounds like together. Yeah, I think that's a good start. Okay, so I think that's pretty good for our melody and counter melody. Now we need to flesh out the accompaniments. So again, we have a full orchestra at our disposal, even if it's a virtual one. So we got to figure out what instruments would be good to accompany this sad melody. Harp, I think might be a nice one. I, I like the strings also. The strings, you know, are typically, uh, you know, strings are often uh, used in sort of sad uh, music like this, but we got to be careful not to take over the uh, the melody, right? We have one English horn against, you know, 20 violins and, and uh, 10 violas or something, right? So uh, we've got to be very careful about uh, how we do this. So... I think I'm going to use Divisi. And then what rhythm do we want for the accompaniment? So I don't want something that's just dotted half notes. That's just boring. But I also don't want something that's super interesting <laughs> because that detracts from the uh, interest of the melody itself. So I'm going to just opt for a simple sort of pulsing rhythm on the off beats. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to interlock the first and second violins just to make it uh, just to make it a little more seamless. And these are going to be divisi. So I'll mark them divisi. I'm also, and you know what, I, I haven't put in any dynamics yet. So I need to make these very quiet. I don't want them to take over from that solo English horn. Uh, so I'm going to mark these piano. Now, in, in a real orchestra, you could mark the English horn piano with a solo, and it would stand out. Unfortunately, in notation software, it doesn't know um doesn't know anything about uh you know what solo means uh so i'm going to mark it mezzo forte again in a real orchestra you would probably just mark that piano and the solo marking here would indicate hey i want this to stand out okay now let's let's uh, continue this accompaniment I, i'm mostly just going to use the um the voice leading from our uh, simple melody here. No, not this original version, <laughs> but this version here. Um, so, but again, I'm only using the upper voices, not the lower one. That's the bass, and we'll get to that in a bit. Okay, so...
you know what? I just realized this chord actually has five notes in it. Bum, 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 bum. Um, so we're actually gonna, so I could do a div of three here. Um, but well, you know what? This chord also has five notes in it. So I think I'm actually just gonna introduce the violas here. Um, so let's see. Okay, that'll work. Um, and what's this chord again? I have a D sharp. But actually, I've got that D sharp here, and I kind of like having that in the top. So I guess I could go down to the C here. Now, I'm purposely making that last note uh, B just to introduce just a hint of the dominant feeling. Um, so we had an A, didn't we, in our augmented chord? Now I want to actually accentuate the tonic at the end. So I'm going down to an F sharp here. I guess it could be a G, but again, this feels more like a dominant and it is the same as this F sharp. Okay. Oh, and the, uh, the, um, viola needs to be piano. And this should be mezzo forte. So let's listen to what we've got so far. Okay, not bad. Um, one thing that struck me about the playback is there's no phrasing. So a real player would, would um, you know, would crescendo and decrescendo. So we're going to unfortunately have to write that in, uh, which is maybe not a bad idea anyway. Um, so here we're mezzo forte, here we're forte. Um, and then we're going to decrescendo here. Um, okay. Unfortunately, finale does not align your dynamics automatically for you. There, there are plugins that it comes with that do that, but unfortunately <laughs> you got to do it yourself. Um, most of the time. So I will drag in some, uh, some, um, dynamics. And actually, I think I want it to decrescendo on this last note, not just in the, not just in the English horn but in the strings as well. 
So I'll put in a decrescendo there, decrescendo here, decrescendo here, and a decrescendo here. Oh, actually, you know what? We still haven't put our dynamics or phrasing in here. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, I think that sounds more natural. Okay, it's still lacking. I, I think I'm going to add some harp just playing the same chords that the strings are playing. Okay, so a C chord. Now, notice I'm going from E to E flat here. Um, so that's a pedal change. But this is a slow tempo. tempo. So, bum, bum, bum. At that tempo, a harpist absolutely should have no trouble changing a pedal in, in that amount of time. Um, uh, you know, a, a harpist can change one pedal very quickly. And I think that's the only um, pedal that'll need to be changed for this chord. So let's continue adding the accompaniment. Now you may be saying, hang on, that's a tenth. And you're right, a harpist's hand usually can stretch a tenth. That's about the same distance as an octave on the piano. So uh, doing a tenth in one hand on the harp is no problem. Now I have the, the bass playing uh, a B here. So I'm going to leave the B out of the top. Now, the uh, last note in this chord is a D sharp. Now, because the harpist probably already has their E flat pedal um, pressed uh, or sort of raised, right? You raise the pedal to make the note go flat. You lower the pedal to make the note go sharp. I'm actually going to use an E flat here, even though properly for voice leading, it's a D sharp. Again, the harpist is going to have to change their E flat pedal to an E here. Again, it's one beat, so it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, let's mark the harp as piano as well. 
much like a piano, a harp is notated with dynamics between the staves, unless they're different. So let's see what this sounds like. like it, but there's too much emphasis on the third beat, especially in the bass. So I'm going to try just taking out the bass note on the third beat of everything and see if that's better. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. Now it sounds like the proper emphasis is on the first beat. Okay. And we need a bit of bass. Um, I mean, we have some now in the left hand of the harp. And I don't want anything that's really low or heavy. This is sad. It's not like, you know, big and bombastic. So um, maybe actually with the harp, maybe double bass pits would work nicely. But I just want to accent the first note of each of these. So um, I also feel like the other thing is we've now got accents on one and three, especially one. There's nothing really happening on beat two. So let's put pizzicato on all three beats. Um, and I want, I really only want low notes on the first beat. So I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put the other notes much higher. And this B is the same as this B. And then I'm going to do C. Sorry, C. And then this is the same as that G. Now B. Now, the bass is an octave lower. That's okay. These will be pits, so they won't last long. Okay, something like that. Um, we'll mark it piano, we'll mark it pits. And let's see what this sounds like. I like that. Okay, now I think that's good for the basic structure. Now the only thing left is maybe some highlights, right? It's all the same the whole way through. It might be nice to accentuate a few moments, right? Like, like this moment where it goes to G major, that's kind of a nice moment. And then finally at the end where it returns to E minor, that's a nice little moment there too. So let's see, how could we do that? Um, uh, what instruments would add a little bit of resonance but wouldn't like take away from the 
uh, effect. You, you know what? Actually, brass. We haven't used brass at all. Or we could use... Um, yeah, horns. I think horns would work nicely. They blend nicely with everything. So let's do that. Uh, let's see. So this is a C minor. And again, horns um, are transposing. So, um, so even though this is a written G, it's a sounding C. Right, that's a C, even though it's a written G. Um, this is one, two, three, and four. Um, now, remember, horns are scored one, three, two, four from top down. So the first horn plays the top note. The third horn plays the second note. The second horn plays the third note. And the fourth horn plays the bottom note. So we're going to follow that uh, scoring approach here. If in film music, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but we're going to use this sort of conventional classical uh, scoring convention. Uh, I don't have a B in this chord, should I? Mm -hmm -hmm. The B is only in the second violins right now. Uh, well, we'll try it and see how it sounds. <clears throat> and then... Now, I just want these to be a swell, so very quiet to loud to just accent those moments. So let's do that. Okay, these will start out like pianissimo and just crescendo to like a mezzo piano. Oops. And here again will be mezzo piano. And again, a good practice is that you always want to notate what the peak of the dynamic is, right? Is this a giant swell or just a small one? And in this case, it's, it's fairly small, kind of medium-sized. So you want to go from pianissimo to mezzo piano and back. Okay, uh, let's see what this sounds like. Yeah, that's good. Um, I think, well, hmm, do we want to do anything with percussion? We don't have anything at all right now. Uh, maybe we could add a little subtle glockenspiel, if that's not an oxymoron, on this, uh, uh, 
starting around here, maybe. And we want that to be very quiet. And I'll just mark it piano along with the rest of the accompaniment. I think that's good. I think we'll leave it there. So again, just to clean up the score, let's delete all of the instruments we're not using. Not using any brass except for the horns. Not using any Percussion, except for the Glock. Now let's delete all the measures that we're not using. Okay, and of course now it's, we scroll out, you can see it's way too small on the page. So we'll adjust our staves or the size of our staff. I don't know what, 100% should be fine. And any final cleanup? Uh, yeah, we'll have to move the staff down a little bit. Um, this one maybe down a little bit for that high G. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so first up, we have a comedic version. Now for this one, I decided to have the melody played on the bassoon. Actually, originally I just had it on the bassoon. Then I decided I'd add some xylophone um, on a few notes of it, not every note. That added a little bit too much contrast, so I added a piccolo playing three octaves above the bassoon. So you've got the melody in bassoon, piccolo, and xylophone. Um, and then I just wanted some very sparse accompaniment. Again, for comedic um, music, often it's sort of little bursts here and there. So I have oboe sort of filling in the chords, um, but you'll see that I've sort of added some inter, uh, some passing notes in there to make it, the lines a bit more interesting. And then the bass I have played by a uh, double bass, Arco, not pits, um, with a cello playing pits on every on the downbeats of each bar, and a contrabassoon doubling the bass. Finally, I decided to add the triangle playing on the notes when the melody comes in. So the other thing you'll notice about this is that it actually changes time signature. Uh, it's, it's irregular, right? It goes from 4-4 four, four to 3-4. That's something that often happens in comedic music, skipping a beat or adding an extra beat to sort of keep it a little off kilter. Okay, so let's see how it sounds, shall we? Okay, next up, I decided to make a sort of creepy lullaby. Um, so I, I thought, well, what would be a good 
a lullaby instrument. Well, Celesta is perfect for that. So I have the main melody played on the Celesta. And you can see I did a simple transformation here where I have the melody played bum, 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 but I interspersed it with other notes. And in this version, I've actually extended the melody uh, so that I have two bars for each bar of the original. So bum, bum, bum becomes bum, 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 bum. And again, you can see this is a simple transformation I repeated. Basically, I repeated the whole thing, bum, 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 except in this version, I just repeated this note instead of going back to the E, and then bum, 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 same process there, then bum, 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 bum. I delayed the uh, B until the beginning of this second bar on this one, Bum 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 bum. So that's how I transform the melody again using a little extension and repetition and some interspersed chord notes as well. Then for the harmony, I have harp and then violin harmonics. The violin harmonics are what make it really creepy. Otherwise, it would just sound like a nice little lullaby, but by putting some harmonics in there, it sounds eerie and creepy. And I doubled the melody on the viola, sul ponticello tremolo. Now, you'll notice that I have the celesta marked forte. A celesta is a very quiet instrument, so when you have the celesta playing, you have to be very careful not to overwhelm it. So I have, you know, piano, uh, viola, and harp, and the cello is just playing pits, so it's not going to be uh, overwhelming that celesta. Uh, and and you'll notice I have very little bass here, um, just the occasional notes in the harp. Um, because again, it's a lullaby. You want it to sound like a little kid. And so we associate that with treble, not with bass. So let's see how it sounds. <laughs> Okay, finally, we have an epic version. Now, rather like in the lullaby version, I extended each bar in the original melody here uh, to be two bars. Uh, and actually, for this version, I just kept the melody exactly as it is. Now, what instruments do you connote uh, epic music? To me, it's got to be horns, right, and brass, horns and trombones. So I have the melody and the horns off four. Uh, although they're playing in octaves. Here, bum, bum, bum. And I accompanied that with violins playing divisi an octave, uh, two octaves above actually. Uh, and then in just about all epic music in films, pretty much you hear violin scrubbing away so that's what i did here um and then i have the chords played in the lower brass trombones and tuba as well as the violas cellos and bass now uh i'll be honest in a real orchestra um the violins, I just have this playing Divisi violin too. It is fast note, so it'll stand out somewhat more than if it were just, you know, uh, uh, long notes. So honestly, what I probably should have done is just put this top line in the violins and the bottom line in the violas, and then, you know, let the cellos carry the chord tones. Okay. Um, now, 
For this, oh, and I have the oboes and English horns just doubling the violins just to add a bit more weight to it. It's still not going to be, you know, very uh, prominent, but at least, you know, you'll hear it just a little bit more. Now, I saved the uh, piccolos, flutes, and clarinets to accent key moments here. Uh, and I also have the trumpets just playing ba dum ba dum bum 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 uh, for that, for that little, uh, extra punch, right? So, uh, uh, someone said recently to me that, uh, uh, trumpets are basically percussion instruments in an orchestra. And while it's not quite true, uh, they can be used as such. And that's almost how I'm using them here. Uh, speaking of percussion, we actually have a bunch going on here. So we have a timpani and then five percussion players. Uh, so we have timpani playing some roles. We have cymbals accenting key moments, kind of like the horns did in our sad version. We have tam-tam playing some, uh, you know, uh, accenting some, some other key moments. We have the chimes also doubling the melody. Uh, that's probably going to get kind of lost uh, uh, in the mock-up, but honestly, in a real orchestra, you would be able to hear that. Uh, we have the toms and bass drum. Oh, actually, the bass drum um, is also just sort of accenting every chord change. Bum, brr, bum, brr, bum, brr, bum. And then the quad toms are playing a bum, 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 bum rhythm. Oh, uh, yeah. So the uh, only other thing is the uh, flutes piccolo and clarinets toward the ends have a little run, uh, just accenting the very last note. Yeah, the runs, again, this could be tweaked a bit more. The runs are a little weak. I could have the um, oboes uh, doubling those with the clarinets, probably. Uh, you know, the, the scrubbing violins would be weak in a real orchestra. You can actually hear them fairly decently in this mock-up, but um, in a real orchestra, they would be much quieter. Uh, also, in a real mock-up, those trombones and tuba would be much louder than in this mock-up. Uh, again, our mock-up's lying to us a little bit, but that is okay. As long as you're aware of those sorts of things, you know, you can adjust for them. Um, one last thing to note is that um, I went up to the top E on the horns here. Because this is loud, that's fine. Horn players have a hard time playing a high note softly. They can, as you know, very skilled horn players can do that, but it's difficult. And usually these top notes on the horn are just, they're just going to stick out. So uh, that's why I kept this high E till the very end. So let's see what this sounds like. All right, well, that's it for today's video. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please drop a like, um, you know, to help other people find it. If you enjoy this sort of content, then, you know, you might consider subscribing to my channel. Um, and, um, you know, as always, if you have feedback, please let me know in the comments. Until next time, have a good one.